as Giam said, I'm Daniel. I'm in training for the LLM and, and a member of the PCC in the church. We have been looking at the summer series, um, summer Sam series, and that was started up with Giam as the first person on June, July 30. Talks about Psalm 139. Um, that God is all seeing, God is all knowing, and God is everywhere. Whatever circumstance we find ourselves, God is expecting to have a personal relationship, personal church with us. And a key part in that psalm, he says, Search me, O God, and know my heart, and I'll praise you because you have been making me fearfully and wonderfully made us. God is everywhere. That is how we started in Psalm 139. Then the next week, Esther talked about Psalm 4, which is a Psalm of David. And he asked the question, how are you? That question is normally asked and we, not, we say I'm good when we are not actually because there's something that's underlying it. But he asks that question and we say, in whatever circumstance we find ourselves, it's when we trust in God, he set our mind and our body at rest, which is a key aspect there. Then the following week, in August 13, Sue talks about Psalm 46, and he asks, help me, Lord, because God is our refuge and strength. In every circumstance we face ourselves, we look up to him for that help. And he says, be still and know that I am God, which is important. And he mentioned three things. He said that God is a refuge in our trouble, in our trouble. And there is hope in a dwelling place. And to call to God in our chaos. Some of the things I'll be making reference today. And last week, Fiona the Muna talks about Psalm 37. It's not fear. We see we all dealt with differently. There are circumstances and situations that we face. And we fret. We get disturbed. We get discouraged. And all those things will happen. We have been angry or walked up. But what he says is that do not fret about others. Because we see other people who are doing bad, they are prospering. But we are, as Christians are not prospering. And he says that for us to shift the focus onto God, a key verse there is to take delight in the Lord, and he will give us the desire of our heart. So that is the story so far. And therefore, to complete this series today, I decided to be like the American. We say, go big or go home. <laughs> so in effect, I'll be looking at Psalm 42, which is Psalm, the Psalm of Korah, and Psalm 32, the Psalm of David. That's way. Holy Ghost, I invite you this time to speak to me, to me, and to your people, in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I start, I want to give a background about why I chose that psalm. Some years ago, I am working in two professions. I have two main jobs, earning money, good money. And as a result, I have several credit cards from different banks because I have one in Atwest, in Barclays, in TSB, in IBS. But as I was earning that, I spent with the credit card as soon as I'm paid, I play a bit off, so I'm not paying interest. I think I'm smart, eh? <laughs> Doing that, yes. Then apart from those, I have other things that I was involved in. Writing articles for some association, marking script online, ver external verification. Life was good. Money was coming in. Things was going on well. Then I took a wrong turn in life. And then things become downward. Firstly, I lost my two main job in quick succession. Quickly, I'm fired. And when I, did, when I lost those jobs, as smart as I was, I returned all my credit cards. My friend said, Daniel, is she yours? You've lost your main source of income. You don't know when you're getting it back. And you're returning all those credit cards. I said, yes, because I don't know. I don't want to get myself into a lot of debt. So as such, the main point of my income was marking skills online. And because 
all the other things I've been doing has been cut off. I was washing and marking so that I get some mon more money. And because of that, I was not marking the papers right to line. And so one association banned me, another banned me, and the other. So all that source of income cut down. Okay? And also the other clients I was having, they all would run for me. So I was down. Lost faith. Lost hope. No source of income. Then the last trigger, I did a transaction that even a little sum of money in my account was taken off. So I was completely broke. I could not afford to have a haircut. I have to ask someone. I could not afford to take a bus pass. I was so low, so down, so dejected. And I was having a lot of suicidal thought because trying myself could not do anything. Then a, a particular day, I went home where I was living. The light and the electricity was off. No money to pay to charge the gas or charge the electricity. So I said, oh, that's it. That's the end. I have, no, I have nothing to do because I'm worthless. And I was thinking of taking some medication to end my life. And something just talked to me to call the reverend of the church I was attending because he was a father figure to me in all the struggle of those situation. So I made a call. He went to voicemail. I made a second call. He went to voicemail. So what's going on? So I decided to send him a message on WhatsApp. When I send that, I give myself a time frame. If I do not get any response, I know I have no reason to leave her no more. Holding my phone, looking at the time, nervous, shaking. Then, at some point in time, I receive a message from the WhatsApp. And it says, Daniel, my son, hang in there. I say, does this reverend know something that I don't know? Because I have been trying to hang in there, I couldn't. And he says, I am on the train going to Scotland. This was August like this summer. I was in, I'm in the train going to Scotland for two weeks to build a family. When I saw that, I was cursing in myself. I've, I've never used explosive for that time in that situation. What? You're going to Scotland on holiday. I'm suicidal about committing suicide. suicide. You could not pick the call and call me to encourage me to lift my soul. And I believe you would have been in a certain situation in your life when you are down and this car and you're expecting the, the reverend or other leader in the church to call you. That was explosive, cursing. Then after I take a breath, I continue to look the message and it says, in fact, I have to remind you that you have been scheduled to lead the prayer meeting at one o'clock in church for the week. I said, what? What does this man know that I have not known? I've lost faith, I've lost hope, I've lost courage. And you're going on holiday and putting me to lead the prayer time at one o'clock Saturday afternoon. So what? That causing explosive. Then after a while, after reading further, I look at the scripture that he sent to encourage me. And one of the scripture was in Psalm 42. Psalm 42, verse 1 says, As the deer panted for water, so my soul longed after you, longing for God. I have been singing that psalm, leading worship in that psalm, but I've never, never got the revelation about the circumstance I faced myself, that when I'm hopeless, I could not help myself. The help is only for me. Longing for God. I have been leading worship in that song, singing it many times, thousands of times. But it's have no revelation to me. Then I continue reading the scripture in that psalm to verse 5. And the verse 5 says, 
My, why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will let praise him, my Savior and my God. I was downcast. I was directed. This is a song that I've been singing. Why so well, that's all my soul. Many times. But I've never got the revelation until that time when I was rock bottom. That when I am devastated, thought that I've lost hope. Nobody can help me. But somebody has to help me, which is putting my hope and trust in God. Amen? And this psalm was written by the psalm of Korah. And the story about that is in Numbers. The Korah family rebelled against Moses. And God passed judgment and wiped off all the family of the Korah except the son. Okay? And they would have been in the position to, they were downcast, they would be dejected, they would be um, um, fretting, angry. But instead, in that rock bottom situation they were, because they could not worship in the temple, there are people around in the area mocking them. But instead of them being down, they make a choice. And the choice is, in that place I was down because I would put my hope and trust in him. Amen? And in the situation you may find yourself, whatever circumstance you may find yourself, it could be health, it could be finance, it could be relationship, astray, it could be something that has been with you in the past. I want to challenge you or encourage you new that what you should do is to put your hope in him, into God. And that is the only way you can go on. Amen? When your soul is downcast, it's good to say to your soul, there is hope. So whatever situation you find yourself, whatever difficulty you find yourself, is good. Because that is what the, chorus, the sons of Korah say. They, they preach to themselves, to their soul, that there is hope. When you feel sad, without hope, you're fretting, you're feeling lonely or depressed. You are in disappointment. You may have various reasons, valid reasons, because we live in the world. You have various reasons to be discouraged, to be downcast, to be despondent, to be dejected. But instead of you looking at yourself, because you have limitation, you cannot help yourself, I'm asking you, I'm inviting you, when that time you're downcast or devastated, is to have your hope in God, because that is the real hope, and that's the real change, in Jesus' name, amen? And so this was the case. This was the case. And one writer by Samuel smiled, put this up. Because when you are downcast, it's about being hopeful. And the hope is in Jesus. He says, hope is like the sun, which as we journey towards it, it casts the shadow of our burden behind us. Hope sweet in the memory of experience, well loved. It tempers our troubles to our growth and our strength. It befriends us in the dark hours, excites us in bright ones. It lends promise to the future and purpose to the past. And above all, hope turns discouragement into encouragement. Hallelujah. So hope turns discouragement into encouragement and determination. And there is a saying that if you're going to hell, keep going. As long as you have the hope and the hope and the trust in God, that and you will know that instead of you focusing on your own inability, because we are limited, but it's about focusing on the ability, on the trust of God's ability. When we feel depressed, downcast, discouraged, it is good to take advantage of God's word to take advantage of God's word as antidepressant. Do you hear me? Yes. When we feel down, discouraged, downcast, dejected, God's word should be an antidepressant to encourage us to all earth littles. So more, no matter what situation you're finding yourself, so more, no matter how challenging your situation would have been, how discouraged you are, how low in confidence you are, I have got good news for you. And the good news is for you to say to yourself, say to your soul, I have hope. Say to your soul, I have hope and my hope is in God. Say it again. I have hope 
and my hope is in God. So whatever circumstance you face yourself, it's about having that. Because that makes a lot of difference in our life. And so after reading those scriptures, I went in a coma, like a trance. But that's what happened. I will talk to you sometime in the future. But before continuing, I want to also reference earlier on when I said I was thinking the past, the reverend should call me, and the same with you in our situation. But I believe, though the reverend did not call me, I believe he was praying for me. I believe other people were praying for me. The same in your circumstance here in the church. When you are facing in some situation, you may be thinking, why the Graham has not called me, or, or Luis, or Andrew, or, or both of the only leadership. But I believe, though they would not have called you, they will be praying for you. Because we know we are in the family of love. And we all need to know that when every one of us is in good health, the family is happy. When any one of us is dejected or down, the family is affected. So though the pastor did not call me, but I believe he was praying for me. Because when I had that revelation, I've been reading that psalm, I've been singing that song many, many times, thousand times. But I did not get the revelation I got from it. That when my soul was downcasted, always about giving up, is to turn the page, to open it, and not turn to man. Amen? So even eventually, coming to church, reading the Bible and everything, yes, the, the, the reverend will pray for you, leadership will pray for you, but the ultimate goal is for you to be a disciple, to move on, so that you'll be able to have that relationship with God. You'll be able to communicate one-on-one -on -one with God. Amen? And as I'm saying this to you, I pray that God will touch your heart to have a relationship with him. So in your desperate situation, when you're down, you know there is hope to call on him. Yes. So I was in trance, slept. I wake up in the morning, surprised. I was feeling downcast, dejected, disappointed, lost confidence. But I feel some energy after getting that revelation. And then I start thinking, because I should go for the prayer meeting, start at 1 o'clock, by train is 20 minutes, by bus 25 minutes, but I could not afford the bus or train, so I had to walk. I was walking, meditating on the psalm, left early, getting to church. I was sweating because it was summer out, get myself ready, lead the, the prayer meeting, the prayer meeting finish. After, there's an old lady that comes to me. She said, Daniel, I was seeing you when you laid in and encouraging people. Tears in your heart. Tears in your heart. But what I want to encourage you is that the situation you're going to is not as a result of anything that you've done wrong. Don't be too hard on yourself. Don't feel so guilty. The Bible says, cast your worries unto him. He cares for you. If you feel you've done anything wrong, it's to let it go. Confess and take a turn because you're a servant of God. Amen? And when that lady talks to me like this, I have been encouraging people. I was so much tears running down because I have been gone into that situation because of my thought, being so hard on myself, so hard on myself, on my, the mistakes I've made, starting to enumerate the mistakes I've made. And a lot of time in our life, where we get into the point of discouragement or being downcast, is that we do not forgive ourselves or forgive other people or other things that have happened in our life. And I will ask a question today, set of questions. Is there anyone in this room that have not done anything wrong in your life? 
Is there anyone in this room that have not done anything wrong in their life? Is there anyone in this room that think that they have never seen in their life? Is there anyone who think that they have not seen yesterday? Or not today, or not today is young. I have not seen today. <laughs> or not seen tomorrow. The fact is we sin. We sin. And the issue is that it's not about us sinning. It's about what we do when we sin. And that brings me to the, uh, in my life, in the story about in Psalm 32, the word we read in the Bible, in the Bible read in Psalm 32. And this is a Psalm of David. Why is the first one was the Psalm of Korah? This was the Psalm of David. When we talk about the Bible, we know about the story of David. That's a good man, a man after God's heart. Praising God, giving thanksgiving to God, and all that. But there is another side of David. Okay? And of course, what happened is that the eyes lost adultery, murder. And when that was done, Psalm 51 account of that, that David did not acknowledge the sin. And there was a lot of consequences that were, um, he faced. But there is in Psalm 32, when David acknowledged the wrong that he has done, make that confession and that repentance and turn. And that is when we then know that David is a man after God's heart. David was sinning, and he made that confession, mad repentance, and turned away. And that is why when we come into church, at the start, we make the confession. Because we may sin knowingly or knowingly. And we may want to hold something as a grievance to us. But look what, they, what is happening there in that psalm. It's a blessed one who transgression are forgiven, who sin are covered. You get the blessing, not when you hide it, but surrender, confess. Because the Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we will confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all, not some, all unrighteousness. So some of the time or some of the cases where we go into that case of discouragement, dejection, downcast, is that we may be having sin and we may think this is what is bringing us down. But as Christian, I'm encouraging you, as that is seen in David. And he says, when I kept silence, my bones wasted away through the groaning all day long. David knows what he's done, and it become proud and purpose. And there was a lot of punishment physically, emotionally, spiritually. But when David looked, oh God, I've wronged you. Forgive me. Then David have that cleanse of our heart, is that, that I'm a child of God. I can be able to praise God because I have a contract heart and a broken spirit. I can be able to praise God. And that is what is seen there. Because all day and night, there has been some troubles. Heavy. My strength was sap and the heat of so summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you forgive the guilt of my sin. Amen? It is easy for us to drift away from God. It's easy. But what I'm admonishing you is that when you do anything wrong, is to quickly, quickly come back to the fold. Come back. Ask for forgiveness. Talk to God. Reconcile. We establish our fellowship with God. I sap as soon as possible. That is what I did not do. That leads me into that dungeon. Almost, I will not have been here, but by his grace. Amen? And this is it. We may fall short. We may fall short. But what is required there is about making that declaration. Because Romans 5, it says, God demonstrates his love. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ has paid the price. 
So it will, I will sound controversial here. Because the problem is not sin. Although Paul says, Kachawe will continue in sin that the grace may abound. You know what's the problem? The problem is, I get from Hosea 4.6. Hosea 4.6. It says, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Because they have rejected knowledge, they have rejected you. And the problem, I'm not giving you a bypass that, oh, Daniel says not sin, go and sin. No. But the problem is a lack of knowledge. And that lack of knowledge here is two things. The knowledge of God and the knowledge of God's word. The knowledge of God and the knowledge of God's word. So when you have the knowledge of God, who God is, your thinking, your relationship, your conduct, your behavior change. I say it again. When you have the knowledge of God, your thinking, your action, your behavior, your conduct change. And secondly, the knowledge of God's word. So when we're going through the, this psalm, we see the different psalm. It's about talking to us so that in different circumstances, God's word is there to give us hope. God's word is there. And in the case, as I said controversially, you may have fallen short, you may have sinned, but God's word is there for you to confess and turn away and go back to the fold so that you'll be like the, the prodigal son. Welcome back, my faithful servant. And that is what God is expecting us, to have the knowledge of him. Who is he? Who is he to you? Because that affects your conduct and what you do. And the knowledge of God's word also affects our action. So as I close, I have three questions to ask or for you to, post, um, to think about or reflect. And the first one is, what do you do when you had a good day at the office of your life? When everything is good, beautiful, what do you do? Do you give thanksgiving to God? Praise God. Talk to other people, give testimony to other people about the goodness of God. What do you do when there is a good day at the office of your life? Things are working well. Hmm? Secondly, what do you do when the day is not so good? Moan, threat, complain. It's not fair. What do you do? And the last question is what do you do when you have a very, 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 very bad day at the office of your life, when you're downcast, dejected, suppressed, feeling lost, loved, losing hope, losing thought, losing faith, feeling useless, feeling worthless, everybody have abandoned you. You're on your own. You are isolated. You are in the margins. What do you do? I'll encourage you when you are in that circumstances to look up to him because your hope is in God and God alone. Do you want to give that a try? So give a clap and listen to the God. So as we close there, we see the video psalm that we have been from the start. Um, God is everywhere, present, anywhere. You can call on him and can make that relationship to him. We see there in four, placing your confidence in God, not on man, yourself, having that. And we see and for this if God is our refuge and our strength. Any circumstance, we are able to call on to him. 37 last week. Do not fret. Do not be discouraged or dismantled. And 42, when you are downcast, dejected, it's good for you to have a trust 
to God in difficult situations, to commune with him. And at the end, confession, repentance and forgiveness bring joy that we can be able to relate to God. Amen? Amen. So go big and go home. Amen. Amen. <laughs>